Hello everyone and welcome back to this MLflow series. Uh, in this video we will do a quick demo uh, of the major concepts of MLflow model registry in a very practical way. But before that let me uh, just remind you uh, that the MLflow model registry is, in a nutshell, where you can actually deploy your models to production and where you have tools of continuous integration and continuous uh, deployment. So basically, it's very similar to uh, to ML Ops. Okay, so without further ado, uh, let's begin exploring these concepts. And first, let me remind you that you uh, you actually need to to download or clone uh, my my repo uh, in GitHub. I will leave the link in the description of this video. And for this part, we we will need this folder part 3 MLflow registry uh, ins inside you have a description of what we will do and some other concepts of MLflow uh, and obviously the notebook so let's begin by import importing this MLflow uh, this notebook sorry okay right click import browse and let's choose the right folder, part 3 and a notebook, this one with, with the dbc file extension let's click import ok, so let's open the notebook ok, here in the first cell you, uh, you can see a brief description of the card principles of what we will be doing in this session um, Basically, the flavors that we will use are two. Uh, we will begin by training and creating an XGBoost model and then a TensorFlow model. So we will start by training and tracking this XGBoost model, then register the best iteration of this model and stage it into production and finally load and evaluate it. Then we will create a second version of this model, but this time using TensorFlow and we will train this model and choose the best iteration to transition it to staging then we will compare the version in staging and the version in production and, spoiler alert, the version in staging will be better so we will finally transition it to, uh, into production so let's do it and, and as you can see here the, the problem is a classification problem as in the previous uh, sessions of this MLflow series um, so nothing actually new here uh, let me just attach the cluster first let's begin by importing the, the classes that we have defined and stored in this notebook here uh, I have already talked about this uh, this pattern of code in the, in the previous, I think it was in the previous or in the first yeah, it was in the part 2 of this ML uh, series but basically uh, I have divide, divided our project into files uh, this file is basically the, the driver and this one contains all the classes that we will need so this way our code is better organized and more close to real and more close to a real life uh, scenario. So, okay, as you can see, the classes are are uploaded. Now we can just get the the training and validation data. Okay, it's ready. And now the first thing that we will do is to basically train the our our XGBoost model. For that, we will use uh, we will use this set of parameters, the maximum uh, depth of our uh, decision tree of the XGBoost, the the learning rate, and the number of of runs or the epochs. Okay, we will actually run all these three sets. I had this commented before because I was testing this and I wanted I didn't want to to wear a lot of time so yeah, 
that's all I need to delete this one yeah and we are now ready to go okay let's let's execute this cell then okay this will obviously take take some time so uh, I will pause this video and return once it's finished okay as you can see uh, it finally finished running so now let's open the MLflow uh, UI and choose the best uh, iteration and uh, stage it into production so let's begin by opening the, the user interface here you can see all, all of the three runs that we did with these uh, three different set of parameters uh, so let's open the user interface okay let's begin by compare comparing these three experiments well, let's see uh, which one of the three had the highest the highest highest performance let's choose the uh, evaluation mean error okay and basically as we can see uh, the experiment that had the lowest evaluation uh, mean error was this one which cor which corresponds to the one with as you, you can see there to the one with uh, 20 number of runs or 20 iterations as expected actually because we uh, we um, it's it's the one with the highest number of epochs so what we will do now is to basically um, stage it into production I just want to demonstrate to you how to actually do it okay let's open this one I think it's it's this one let me see yeah maximum depth of 15 20 then yeah it's this one so how can you we actually register this model and stage it uh, into uh, production or staging or whatever basically we need to go here to artifacts select the model and then uh, click register model and then we need to create a new, a new model actually I already have here the, the model that I wanted to create so it's this one fashion and this model it's the name I have picked for this model and let's register it we'll do, it will take a se some seconds yeah it's already done let's open it and here we can we can choose to stage it uh, to stage in production or to archive this this model let's begin by by transition it to or creating a request to transition it to stage let's ask Mary Jane if it's possible transition this model to staging Okay, and it's here. So, uh, Mary Jane could eventually go here and ap approve, reject, or cancel. Let's let's re actually reject the, this this transi uh, this transition. And let's say something like, uh, "Are you mad?" Transition. It to production right now we need to deliver something today okay let's press confirm now we can we can finally make Mary Jane happy and transition it to to production here we can simply approve nice okay and finally we have 
uh, this model in production. So let's go back to to the notebook. Okay, and uh, in this section, I am actually explaining how you can do what we have just did uh, in the user interface. So, yeah, you can actually uh, add some descriptions to the to the model. I don't think we we did that, but it's it's pretty straightforward, and it's uh, here you can have an explanation on how to do it on the high level. Okay, so he, this one is our uh, the name of our model that we have just registered now, and now I want to to show you how how we can load this model and for that we can use uh, two ways uh, we can use we can use the version of this this model or we can use the staging uh, the stage in which it is which in this case is production i think i'm missing some cell to run no Okay, now we think it's everything. Okay, so let's just run this one and now run this one. The output should be exactly the, the same. It's, it's just to show you that you can load the model using the version or the stage in which the model is. Okay, so now let's, let's uh, generate some predictions uh, using this model that we have just uploaded which is the one that it register in production. And for that, uh, the data that we will use will be the, for the sake of simplicity, we will use the validation data and we will plot the results using a confusion matrix. So let's do it. Okay, it's here, as you can see, uh, we have here plotted the confusion matrix for the validation set. And the results are actually pretty good. Uh, there are there are some uh, some images or some some labels that the model was having a difficult time trying to uh, to predict, like the label zero, the label two. Uh, it predicted as being zero where it should be six, and so on. Okay, so now we will do the exact same thing, but we will now this time use a TensorFlow model and spoiler alert, it will be, it will have uh, better results, uh, a better overall performance. So then we will later uh, stage this model into production. So it will be the same model with the same name, but uh, version two number two and we will then up, uh, update the model in production uh, so it can be this one okay, so let's start by by training this uh, this model okay let's run it okay so the model has finally completed uh, running uh, with an accuracy as you can see here of uh, of 97 percent um, so now let's confirm these results in the mlflow user interface uh, you can see here the the two runs uh, using tensorflow um, and you can see here the, the accuracy and other metrics and the over the overall performance of tensorflow was much better than XGBoost. Uh, I'm not going into details about this uh, because th that's not the scope of this video. So, although it's a very good exercise for you for you to to confirm uh, why TensorFlow for this specific case has a a, a better performance, uh, but I will skip this part that part and uh, I want to show you how you can. Uh, now create a new version of this model uh, as you can see I have already uh, done that 
uh, and as you can also see uh, this is a version 4 and the reason for that is that uh, if you noticed a minute or two ago uh, when I was uh, creating a version for the Xubus model uh, I used I used uh, this name which already existed and already had previous versions so this one is a uh, is version 4 uh, and now what what we will do instead of staging uh, or transition transition this model into staging using the mlflow ui we will use the mlflow api just to show you how you can do the exact exact thing, uh, same thing uh, but programmatically so uh, this is model, uh, version model 4 uh, let's add uh, a description here let's transition this model into staging now let's evaluate this model and uh, and we will use again a confusion matrix uh, and uh, and we will use the validation data to perform uh, those predictions okay it's finally completed and as you can see the results are slightly better than the ones from uh, XU boost you can you can go ahead uh, at the beginning of this notebook and compare these two confusion matrix but but yeah the difference are visible and uh, tensor the, this model using tensorflow is definitely better in terms of accuracy so let's let's deploy this model into production and once again let's let's make the, the same product pre pre uh, predictions but this time using the URI of the model in production just to confirm that we have loaded the model in production and that is it's indeed uh, the TensorFlow model so let's execute this cell okay so while this is running I want to show you here this section which is all about how you can delete uh, model versions or even the whole uh, model uh, both using the UI, the user interface, or the MLflow API. Um, okay, and yeah, you can see that these two confusion matrix are the same, and that means that we have successfully uh, deployed the TensorFlow model into production after successfully deployed it uh, into staging. Um, and, and that's it. Uh, hopefully now you understand better how you can register models uh, even if you're even if you have different model versions and each version has a different machine learning framework or flavor as MLflow calls it. Um, and as you can see this is a very very useful and powerful module of MLflow. Um, and that's it in the next video uh, I will do the exact same things more or less but locally so you can also understand how you can do this uh, in your in your machine so that's it for for this session uh, thank you very much very very much uh, for your time and see you in the next part